Few trees possess every desired attribute, but the Bradford ornamental pear comes unusually close to the ideal. Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. What you heard right there at the beginning was a 1964 article in the New York Times about the beautiful Bradford pear tree. It did at one time in people's minds come as close to the ideal perfect suburban tree as any other. And Steph and I worked in a garden center back in the 80s and you couldn't sell the, you couldn't put these things in cars fast enough. You know, everybody, everybody wanted them. Uh, the uh, US Department of Agriculture promoted them. They were, you know, this was the ideal tree. Bradford pear, what we're looking at here is a stand of invasive calorie pears, which we'll get to in just a second. But the original Bradford pear was a, is a sterile cultivar. Jumping in, if I said sterile cultivar, I did not mean sterile cultivar. I actually meant that the Bradford pear was not capable of self-pollination. So it was self-sterile, but any, any sort of other uh, calorie pear out there could cross-pollinate it with. It's a big difference. The, there are sterile plants and sterile plants that have been created that cannot cross with any, with any other plant. So we do have sterile plants in the world that are safe you know, in our ornamental gardens. But this, the word sterile does not apply here. It just means self-sterile. It needed, but with a, with the right partner, it was able to produce seed. Every single Bradford pear that was ever sold is a clone of the original plant. And they were grafted onto a rootstock. So it by itself was a sterile cultivar that didn't have any problems. But other pears, the problem with the Bradford pear was it had uh, the angles of the branches coming off the main trunk were at, at such an angle that they were very short-lived because they broke apart in time. The, basically, the, this is a very fast-growing tree that here, especially here in the south, where we might have ice storms, hurricanes, um, any kind of wind, wind events, they were, they were found to be very weak uh, once they got to a large size. Because of that, other pears were introduced, other calorie pears were introduced, other named, other named cultivars, like the Cleveland pear as an example, which has a slightly different angle on the branches, on the branching, and it was thought that it would be more, it, that it would hold up better in wind and hurricanes and those kinds of things. But what it actually did was give a dance partner to what was a sterile cultivar, the Bradford pear, and it produced viable seed, seed which now the birds have spread everywhere. The, these, these little pears that it produces are, are really, really hard. Once they get a frost on them in the fall, they become soft enough, the birds can eat them, and then they are distributing the seed everywhere. This is, so this is a hybrid calorie pear. This is, you know, this is basically Bradford pear mixed with other, with other pears, and they're coming up everywhere. And those of you, I, I don't know how many, you know, the area that this is covering is unbelievable. I think this may be possibly the worst invasive plant that has ever been introduced. I mean, worse than, you know, uh, we see kudzu. We see kud kudzu was always the thing that was gonna take over everything. Uh, and we see it, but we don't see it everywhere. This plant right now in bloom, at, right at the beginning of March is literally everywhere in the city of Raleigh. And every single year, every single year that we, that they kind of disappear back into the forest and then when they bloom in the spring, you can really, really see them. The Bradford pear was so, one of the reasons it was so popular is because it, it was this four season plant. It had these beautiful white flowers followed by this kind of lustrous green foliage and it has this lollipop shape to it. Even the hybrids, give it enough space and sun, you know, have this kind of nice lollipop shape to them. They have a beautiful, beautiful fall color. And then in the winter time with no leaves and no, and no flowers uh, on it, you can see the structure of the interior of the plant. So it's this beautiful four season plant. The flowers to me are a bit putrid. They're ugly. I mean, they're, they're beautiful, but they're, they, 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 smell, they smell bad. This hybrid has four inch thorns, three to four inch thorns on it. This hybrid suckers uh, and colonizes down at the base. If you cut it off here, uh, it will just pop up everywhere. We've seen fields mowed off of these, and what comes back entirely is Bradford pears. The thing that I think is going to make this thing, it makes this thing the worst invasive I've ever seen, 
is because typically if we clear cut this field, if you just clear cut this field tomorrow, typically you'd have weeds and grasses the first season because the earth wants to cover itself as quick as possible. So whatever, we, whatever seeds that can germinate quick and come up quick, you'll get small flowering plants, grasses, those kinds of things. Eventually here in the south, we would go through a period of time where pine trees would grow here. That'd be the next thing because pine pollen season's coming and pines are just, you know, there's pine, they're pine everywhere if they, if they get an opportunity to grow. And then from there, you would get um, in, in, a, in a succession, ultimately hardwood trees would, start, would slowly but surely uh, fill in and grow slower and sturdier and eventually take over the space sometime in the future. Right now, if you clear cut a space, this is what's coming up. Uh, this is what, something with four inch thorns that can't be cut down and, and kind of can't be stopped. When you have a tree that will ultimately become a thicket where nothing else can grow, and that's what this, this space will become. We've seen, we've, we see it now every year that you see in a space like this, you see a few more the next year, and they are just everywhere. Eventually, it's robbing, it's robbing space of native plants that are back in here that the birds rely on. So it's creating, it's creating a food desert for the birds uh, that live in a space like this where it would normally have this understory of, of blackberries and other things that they can, uh, the, 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 the space that they can have, eventually these are going to shade these blackberries out. And that's all that's going to be here in all likelihood uh, for some period of time until the city, you know, comes in here and tears them down, uh, tears them out, however they're going to tear them out. So it's a food, it's going to create a food desert for the birds. And unfortunately the birds are the ones you know, after we get a frost in the fall that are actually distributing this seed uh, and, and making the problem worse. So they're making the problem worse for themselves. I want to splice this piece of footage in because where I was standing looked like, a, you know, just a beautiful little one-off tree. But this is what happens when that one tree is cut down. This is a field at Dick's Park where some of the Bradford pears, you know, they came through with a machine and just, and they cut them off. Uh, they didn't do anything about the roots or anything, and this is what comes back from it. It's just an absolute solid thicket. And this is what I'm talking about, about them shading everything else out. Eventually, there's a path come through here where, you know, where people are using this, you know, using a path between it that's wearing it down. But otherwise, this would just be complete solid thicket. It's several acres of this, shading everything else out, growing faster than everything else, and producing every one of these flowers is a potential seed uh, to be carried off uh, somewhere else. And every, again, every single one of these plants is covered in nasty thorns. So at this point, you'd have to have something on tracks to go through here and try to knock them down again, or they have to be sprayed with glyphosate, or they have to be some, something happen, you know, or some other chemical that will kill this woody uh, material. But that is what I really wanted to show off in this video. Some states are countering the calorie pear, or the, specifically the Bradford pear and the Cleveland pear and the other named varieties of calorie pears. They're in the process of banning them. There are trade-in programs where you can come in, you know, bring five, five of these seedlings in and they'll give you native trees to replace them with. South Carolina has a ban, a total ban that takes place later this year. And I know they've had a, uh, uh, you know, had people, you know, going out trying to, to kill these things. I, it's going to be very, very difficult to, redu to reduce this issue in the, in the future. I just have, I have no idea how this could actually be taken care of. These are near impossible to remove. They are, if you cut this tree off, all you'll do is encourage it. Uh, you'll get root suckers coming from every direction. If you get in here, you know, if you go through a field of short ones, uh, with a with a mower, um, the thorns are, you know, they're three and a half to four inches long uh, on the older growth. Uh, two, two, three inches. They'll probably pierce tires. Uh, you know, it's going to be. It, I don't know how ultimately this gets solved. It, they, this plant is in the Rosaceae, so it's a rose family member, and hopefully at some point, you know, rose family members tend to have uh, issues when they. When, when there's too many of them in one space. So hopefully that's ultimately the control is once they reach critical mass, um, some sort of leaf spot disease or something like that will become the control for them uh, in the future. But very, very difficult to control, but states have you know, stepped in and you know, Steph can back up right here. I'll show you an example. This is what we see coming up you know, initially. You don't even recognize that as a problem. That's a size right there where I could pop a shovel under it and get it out of here. By next year, 
it'll be this big. You know, one of the one of the things I would say is when you see one of these things blooming and it's small, uh, even if you're not able to get it out at that time, tag it in some way. Tag every one of these things that you see that's in your neighborhood or in your area that you want to get rid of. Because as soon as these flowers are done, it just blends right into the background. It's like you don't see them all season long. They're growing like crazy, out competing everything. And then in the spring, when they show up in their white, you go, wow, there's twice as many as there were last year. That's what it feels like. So if you plan on taking any out and you can't do it right now, make sure you're tagging every single one um, that you see uh, and identifying them and getting them uh, to where you, whatever point you can get, get to them, um, you'll know where they are. Unfortunately, this problem is creeping northward. You know, it, it's in Ohio and, and, and other places in the north as well. Uh, and you know, over time, it's gonna it's gonna be a l very large area that I think these things are actually going to uh, to to be present in. And again, I hope there, I hope there's some sort of control, you know, that way. Eradicating them is gonna be tough. You probably, if you have a lar larger stand like this, it's probably gonna take some sort of professional um, equipment uh, to remove them. If you're cutting them down, the stumps definitely need to be ground because there's they're definitely coming back from suckers, and then you're gonna have to monitor that suckering for some period of time. Uh, any tree within, any Bradford pear within 300 feet of one of these things is producing seed. So your, your, your beautiful Bradford pear that's in your garden um, that was, again, a sterile cultivar is now participating uh, in the spread of these. You know, I don't know what, you know, I think, I think that's where, probably where we'll head to, to toward is removing as many of them as we possibly can uh, from people's gardens. Unfortunately, these are crossing with one another now and they're, they're just gonna be bad. Normally my videos are kind of feel good stuff, but this particular tree, you know, we, we watched it over, you know, the last decade, one here and one there going, what the heck is that? To, oh my God, it's an entire field. It's an entire corner. It's an entire, everything that's abandoned here in this city. Uh, this is what it looks like now. And it's just kind of, it's, kind of, it's unfortunately kind of, kind of depressing and you know, hopeful that uh, you know, this will be taken as seriously as it needs to be taken. Uh, and these things can start to be removed as quick as, as, quick as possible. And hopefully they'll succumb to some sort of uh, uh, overpopulation issue that you know, frequently happens in monocultures like this. One thing you can definitely do, and the purpose of this video is to spread the word. Make sure that people know, you know if, you, if you see a neighbor in the back of their property, is, you know, this kind of thing is starting to show up in it. You know, make sure you're tell, you know, telling folks what this actually is. This is not, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, as I'm standing here, you're all gonna go, what's the problem, right? Look at this thing, look how beautiful it is. Uh, but you have no idea that this entire field within probably the last, probably six to 10 years, this entire thing has happened. And within another four to five years, we can see suckers all in here, all in this. Eventually it will shade out everything that's living in the understory of it right now. And this is what this is what will be here. So spread the word. You know, if you see one of these, if you're, if you're seeing these things come up in a little wooded area in your garden, uh, try to get them out uh, as soon as possible. Thanks for following along with the channel.